Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live event with Scandinavian Photo and Blackmagic Design. Seems we have about 65 people with us so far, so a warm welcome to you. Um, let's see if we should wait for a few more. We have about 100 people today. Um, so let me start by introducing myself. My name is Suzanne and I'm B2B account manager at Scandinavian Photo. And uh, I'm pleased to meet you all today. And I will start by showing you briefly, we have a special offer for you today who are attending this live event. So I want to show you some uh, information. Let me see if I can share the screen with you. Right, there we go. So welcome to this event. And uh, we have a special offer for you with a discount if you buy a combination of products. We have a discount code that we will send to you by email. So don't miss out on this offer. Also, we have for you prepared kits that we you can order through our website. We also offer customized solutions and professional studios. So you can either just contact us and we will help you with whatever you need. And now I will hand over to Gabriel of uh, Black Magic Design. Welcome, Gabriel. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this session. And I would like to thank uh, Scandinavian Photo for hosting as well. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, let me change my screen for you. Well, first of all, uh, thank you everyone for attending this session today. <clears throat> Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Gabriel Catelli. I've been a technical series specialist for Black Magic Design for about a year now. And previously, before that, I used to work for Manchester United and um, I was working first as a sound engineer and moved up to a camera operator. And then I became a what would be equivalent to a broadcast engineer and that gave me a lot of experience in the live production uh, industry. So. <clears throat> Uh, basically, that's very similar to what we're going to be talking about today. So what we're going to be talking about today is web broadcasting. And there has been an interesting shift in the types of productions made and uh, the uh, available uh, delivery methods for live production content uh, over the last couple of years, which led to the development of products like uh, the Ata Mini range. And this is going to be the main focus of this presentation. So a quick uh, look what we're going to be covering today. We're going to have a quick look at the web broadcasting trajectory uh, and the interaction between professionals, individuals and companies alike and audiences. We're going to discuss some of the influencing factors and define uh, the ground uh, of web broadcast and live streaming, which is a competitive but uh, very exciting market. And we're going to get to know uh, some of the most relevant tools of the Atom Switcher product range and how you can use them effectively to make your production more interesting. We're going to also have a look at closer uh, lay, uh, to the Atom uh, Switcher family range and, and how you can you combine uh, Blackmagic design solutions and online platform productions uh, <clears throat> of any size at any level. And this will be followed uh, by a Q&A at the end. So uh, without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So um, just a quick reflection on the evolution of this market. Um, this is a large market that has a massively growing popularity over the last 15 years. And thanks to the internet technology and the uh, revolution initiated by video sharing, social media and OTT content platforms. Um, it has now evolved into so many forms and accessible for so many devices, which make it uh, very difficult to imagine the actual scenario communication without it. Looking at some applications here, um, Blackmagic Design offers a broad range of products which can fit perfectly into this market. Our solutions span from acquisition sources to signal distribution, passing through uh, processing hardware and software, 
with the aim of facilitating the delivery of high quality content while preserving and enhancing creative intent. So each one of the applications you can see on this slide uh, use very similar components, if not the same, from source to destination. And we're gonna have a closer look at some real life examples at the end of this presentation. We work relentlessly to offer you this, and even if in the, the, the current circumstances, we know that the pandemic has shaken the AV industry, and for many, it has represented a turning point or a shift in their careers. Some of you have taken this time to reflect on the options and rephase in front of the new challenges. Work from home, smart working and remote attendance are just a few examples of a new way to work in, uh, collectively and partaking in private or public events. The sudden spike in these activities has just reinforced the need for some um, remote and affordable solutions. Talking about remote access and locations, although uh, very beneficial to someone, uh, being in a dedicated or prime location is not longer a must for many. Uh, the nature of programs and coverage, as well as uh, multiplication of events, require the productions to expand or contract in different areas to adapt rapidly to the constantly changing circumstances. Meaning that it's imperative to invest wisely on time and resources and equipment. And we are glad and fortunate to say that neither the pandemic or the fast changing nature of this market has prevented us from being extremely responsive to our customer needs and developers and engineers strive to deliver products and features of outstanding quality, uh, keeping them at a very attractive price point. So let's identify some influencing factors in the web broadcasting market. For the larger majority of productions, this can be either traced to a profit or a service or hobbies activity. And we are aware that some of you already involved in this business uh, for this it would be just a reminder for you and how you decided uh, to make a move. But for people new to this instead, it can represent the beginning of a new challenge, which requires some planning and strategy. So um, whether you start from a blank canvas or you're looking at reshaping your current uh, production workflow, it's important to set your intentions and find out which one of the following aspects needs to be established, built or maintained in order to define your digital engagement. Only after drawing a clear picture, uh, we can match those aspects to a subset of tools and solutions and we will be showing them practically uh, later on in this presentation. So in terms of recognition, uh, one of the hardest things to achieve in such a busy market and especially if you're trying to uh, get started or stand out from the crowd, the ATEM range, which we're going to see shortly, offers tools and features that can make you instantly recognizable, such as logos and titles. Making an impact uh, through creativity is yet another crucial aspect of successful audience engagement and overall better experience. And this can be achieved by layering animated graphics, lower thirds, skiers, picture in picture, which we will also work in the direction of uh, diversifying your communication style, making it more uh, striking and appealing. Building reputation relies on quality and consistency uh, throughout different platforms, and a webcast solution uh, gives you the necessary confidence to broadcast your program, fulfilling industry quality standards. Some of our models uh, even let you record your sources while you are um, streaming live. You can even uh, repurpose your content with, for subsequent editing and uploading and adding those extra bits uh, to promote your production and showcase your creativity as it deserves. When your service or production has the potential to catalyze an audience, uh, we need to make sure it has enough reach. And this can be achieved by casting a larger net uh, throughout a variety of platforms, either online or via traditional broadcast infrastructure. This requires an understanding of the delivery and network options uh, by the chosen solutions. And some of the ATA Mini models, in fact, include an onboard video encoders, direct streaming, and as well as optional conversion uh, and signal distribution accessories to suit your workflow. So Blackmagic Design has always been in the forefront of the media technology industry, and there are some aspects that come onto all our products range 
and they represent the backbone of our solutions, including those designed for web broadcast applications, such as the Atom uh, Mini family range. So in terms of uh, accessibility, uh, compact form factor, as well as clear and simple layout uh, of these units, allow them to sit discreetly in several different production environments and keep the main functions and controls at your fingertips. So whether you're self-operating or managing a presentation or catering a simple solution from somebody else, um, no task should be very hard to achieve because this product is so intuitive. Again, in terms of usability, we tend to use the same applications and menus uh, uh, through our products, and uh, such as the ATEM software control, which is used across the whole ATEM range. So if you know how to use one of them, you can use all of them. And in terms of reliability, uh, the signal integrity is well preserved from source to destination, and it's all in very good hands. In fact, the ATEM minis process the audio and video feeds with the same precision of our top of the range broadcast switches. And in addition to our great onboard encoding quality and recording options optimized for the most popular live streaming applications and platforms. And looking at scalability, something that we're very proud of, most or if not all of our products are designed to ease future expansion in addition to your systems, uh, giving you a clear upgrade path Again, uh, just we just use open open standards, uh, common technologies, and you're not locked in into a particular uh, given ecosystem. So we take a lot of pride in this flexibility. And now it comes the part where I will show you uh, how our products uh, will help to to achieve your goals. And this is uh, the Atom software that we're going to be looking at next. First, I want to tell you about the setup I'm, I'm using today. Our setup is fairly simple. Um, any center, we have the Eta Mini Pro that manages all of our sources and creates a single main uh, signal called program, which is what the audience will see. We're using the uh, USB uh, webcam output right now, and this is your typical presentation or webinar setup. And the ATEM has four inputs on which you can connect all of your sources. At this moment, I have my camera and my PC connected. I have only two sources connected at the moment, but adding all the sources is also very easy. I could uh, add another PC, for example. And when I do, it will communicate with the ATEM and the PC will automatically choose its output resolution based on what the ATEM Mini can do. So this will be uh, the same for the, a gaming console, for example. And you can even set your PC HDMI output, uh, how it's going to behave. Uh, you can set it as an extended monitor or duplicate in your main screen. Whatever you choose, the ATA Mini essentially behaves like a, a, an additional computer monitor in this case. Connecting a camera is just as easy, as long as the HDMI output of the camera is not higher than 1080p60, it should appear in the multi view almost instantly. Another great feature of the ATA Mini range, it has internal standards converters on all of its inputs, and in other words, you can convert pretty much any supported resolution and match to the program resolution set on the ATA software. This means you don't necessarily need to replace everything in your setup or even buy new gear since your ATEM is so flexible with the sources it will accept. So for example, if you're using an older camera that is only 720p, no problem. And that's yet another great aspect of ATEM Minis. It generally, with all of our products, it allows you to scale your production and grow your setup depending on your needs. So again, you can uh, start with an older action camera as your main camera. And when your audience grows, uh, you can invest in some more higher end cameras. So uh, we almost ready to go on air. And this is how simple and fast it is to configure everything. But let's go a bit further and see what the ATEM can add to your production. And in order to do so, I'm gonna open the ATEM uh, software control. So this is the ATEM software control and controlling the ATEM using uh, the webcam output of the ATEM Mini is just as easy as connecting and adding sources. You simply connect to a PC and it should be available pretty much in any software that supports a webcam. 
So basically it's completely plug and play and this is what I'm doing now. So uh, important not note before we start is uh, the Atom software will not handle any other processing or the video and audio processing will happen in the hardware. So this is just a remote control for your Atom. So looking at the software control, uh, it's divided in four pages. We have the switcher page, which is what we're looking now, where you have your transitions and effects. Uh, we have the media page, where you're going to be able to load in <clears throat> your media assets, such as logos and titles. And we have the audio page, uh, which will manage all of your audio sources and levels and uh, audio processing. The camera page uh, will help you uh, to set up and control your Blackmagic cameras, but we're gonna have a closer look at each of every single page uh, in more detail uh, further down this presentation. So today we're gonna be focusing mainly on the switcher page. Um, and here you'll find everything you need to control your program output, set your effects and manage your production. On the left hand side, as you can see here, um, you'll find your transition settings, your sources, and on the right hand of the panel, you're gonna add, find all the settings for your transitions and effects and information both related to recording and streaming. So let's look at the source sides first. Um, here we have uh, your program and preview bus and utilizing the program bus um, switch directly uh, to a given source without any transition and this is what we call cut. So for example, if I press camera one on my program bus, I will cut directly to camera one and this is without any transition. So this is what we call cut. The preview bus allows you to select uh, what source you're gonna be putting on air next. So you can prepare your next move uh, and you can use the multi-view output where you can see both program and preview. So as you can see, if I press my camera one on my preview here, uh, nothing happens. But on my multi-view, I can see my camera one on preview and I know this is what's going next to air. So I have my transition style set to mix and if I press auto, I perform a nice cross dissolve to camera one, and this is how you create a transition knowing what you're gonna be putting on air next. So above the transition controls here, you can see your uh, transition styles, buttons, and this is, uh, <clears throat> this, this is something to keep your program more interesting and engaging. And of course, some of them will be uh, reminiscent from the 80s, but I don't see why not. This shouldn't be an interesting option to have. So if I go on my palette here and I look at my transitions, if I go on wipe, I have plenty of options to uh, help to create something more interesting and more professional. And in this case, uh, I'm gonna set my transition to wipe. And if I press on camera one on my preview and I press uh, auto, I have a nice diamond wipe to camera one. So I have many options here, I can, uh, even change uh, the settings of my transitions, how the softness will go, how much time that will take. And I can even use my transition bar to uh, change between uh, camera one and my PC output. So if I use my transition bar, I can click and hold, and you can see here a nice diagonal wipe according to my transition selection there. So, um, this is all very interesting, but there's nothing uh, saying uh, who I am at the moment. You don't have a name tag or anything like that. And that takes me to my next point on this presentation, which is the downstream keyer, what we're looking at here. So if I go on my downstream keyer settings, I can see that it's looking at media player one as a fuel source and as a key source it has media player key. But one of the simplest ways to create and put a logo on air will be to create an image that has a big content of black and the content that you want to appear uh, overlaid on your program in a different color. So if I select my key source to black and I go on my media play, I have a graphic prepared here, which is just a black content picture with a white stripe with my name. 
you can see if I can put my downstream key to air, press auto here, and I switch to camera one, and you can see now I have a name tag and everybody knows who I am. So if I go back to the ATEM software, I'm gonna take this uh, uh, out. And this is one of the simplest way uh, to put graphics to air, but it's not yet the most effective one. Now I'm gonna talk you up, uh, about, uh, uh, about something else that's another great feature of the ATEMs, is, which is they understand transparency on your graphics. And many more modern for, uh, graphic formats will allow for a transparent background, which will make the downstream key look even better. So uh, the ATEM can use transparency to obtain uh, better looking logos and graphics to put on air, which will lead to my next subject. But before I, I talk about uh, transparency, let's just see how a transparent graphic behaves. So I set my key source to media player one key. I have a graphic to prepare here, which was made on Photoshop, and it has a big content of transparent uh, transparency applied to this image. So if I bring this into my media player from my media pool, you can see here if I go back on my switcher and I press auto to put my downstream key on air, you can see a nice uh, black magic design logo and a uh, stripe that could be either your uh, web, web <clears throat> it could be your website, it could be your name, it could be a hashtag or your Instagram name, it could be anything that makes your uh, production more interesting and in is allowing you to display some information while you're presenting your show. So, uh, very interesting note to, to mention here is whenever you install uh, the ATEM software and you have Photoshop in your computer, the ATEM installer will automatically install an ATEM export plugin on Photoshop. That means you can create logos on Photoshop directly rather than exporting them out and loading into the media player and then to the media uh, uh, into the media library and then into the media player photoshop can export directly to a given slot on the media library and at the media player at the same time so that sounds extremely exciting and that means you can create graphics almost in real time now this scenario is perfect if you're working uh, with uh, a team because you can also have multiple uh, instances of the ATEM software in different computers as long as it's in the same network. So for example you can have someone on the media page and a different person on the audio page and you can even use a graphics operator that can be someone uh, creating graphics in real time in Photoshop allocating them into your media pool and allocating them into your media player according to your program demands and all you need to do is to put your graphic on there. So uh, this is how uh, cool uh, a, a transparent graphic will look. And again, very effective tool, and you can work with a team to make uh, your program look better. So I'm gonna, instead of using uh, that logo with a stripe, I'm gonna just bring my uh, Blackmagic logo there, bring that to the media player, and I'll keep my downstream key to air, so my uh, logo from Black Magic is there all the time. Now, I want to talk to you, to you uh, about uh, one of the coolest effects that you can uh, use with the ATEM Minis, and it's part of our biggest ATEM range as well, which is the advanced chroma key. And if you think about a chroma key, um, uh, a very uh, common example would be uh, the TV weather forecast, where the presenter stands usually in front of a single color background, and the map is inserted by the ATEM to replace that color. And this works similarly to the downstream key, but rather than keying out black or transparent parts of a source, uh, it uses a defined color to do so. So the advanced chroma key is created to uh, help you to select what color you want to choose, and in here, I already pre-selected my color, but if I click on my chroma sample, I can look anywhere on my uh, source, which at this point now is my computer, where it's gonna be uh, the uh, color that I'm gonna be keying out of my uh, source. So uh, let's see how you can create animated graphics by using this. Because 
as you can see, I don't have any green black background behind me and I don't have a green screen here. So we're going to be using this a little bit different today. So I'm going to be using my upstream key at this point. I'm going to switch it to chroma. I have my <clears throat> chroma symbol already selected and I have a video uh, running on the background, which is just a green background video with some animated graphics coming on top of it. So if I do this, bring my video up, click on my uh, camera one and I turn on my upstream key. You can see that you have uh, the player there and I have instant animated graphics to work with my program without having uh, to add any additional sources. I can do this by looking at my PC screen. Of course, I need to do the swipe gesture to bring the video in, but this is how easy it is to create animated graphics with your Atom software. Now I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna go back to my computer and I remove the video out. And there's also uh, a few ways to use uh, this chroma key for graphics with different applications, such as here to record graphics, Pro Presenter, between many others. And these applications uh, can put your graphics to air and create them at the same time. And all you need is uh, an additional uh, free source, um, which is in the case of the new Atom Mini Extremes, there won't be a problem because with them you have uh, eight input sources. So yeah, it's a small drawback, but again, with the newer switches, you're gonna have plenty of sources and you can use uh, external uh, computer uh, graphics generated by uh, particular softwares to load your animated graphics on air. So this is all uh, looking uh, good, uh, but now we're gonna show you another thing that I already uh, touched on that today, which is uh, the DVE. <clears throat> the DVE can be uh, more intricate and, and they can uh, help you to look professional, especially if you have a static presentation like we have right now. So I'm going to use some of the presets to put this on there. And you can see me right on the uh, left corner of your screen. There you go. I can talk to you and make eye contact to make this very uh, more uh, appealing. Uh, more engaging with your audience because you're looking at a, a particular a static graphic or it could be a presentation that's very static and that helps you to keep your audience attentive. However, there's uh, a few different things that you can do with that. But basically what DVE uh, and does, uh, it allows you to create a picture in picture and you can overlay any source over another source using the picture in picture button. This is the size that you're gonna get if you're gonna use one of the picture picture uh, presets. But if I go on my upstream key and on my DVE palette, you can see that my fuel source is looking at camera one. And what I can do now, I can click and drag to change values here where I'm gonna uh, be able to change the position and the size of my DVE to anything that I like. I can also mask out a part of my DVE, so I can click on mask, and I remove a portion from the left, and I remove a portion from the right, and you can see here, now you have a square DVE. Um, going back to the presentation quickly, if I take my DVE out for a second, you can see that, <clears throat> I have presets set for my DVE, but if I want to keep uh, my same sizes and, and any uh, changes that I made on my picture-in-picture uh, -picture box, I can simply just press the on button there and I still have my picture-in-picture -picture on the same place. However, if I pre press any of the presets there, I'm gonna lose my posi position and size. So this is a very important note to remember that whenever you press the preset, you're gonna lose your position and size. However, you can see my mask uh, still there and I have a square DVE. D 
DVE is an amazing tool and they keep your audience attentive while you're displaying a static content, for example, uh, what I was doing now. But fortunately, uh, the DVEs are completely configurable and you can actually get anything that you want to achieve in terms of size, uh, shadow, borders, and even masking out a portion of your picture. That takes me to my next point, which is Super Source, something that's gonna be available on the ATEM Minis Extremes and Extremes ISO. So what basically what Super Source is, is a DVE on steroids. You can actually put four sources on top of the fifth one on air. So how amazing is that? For, on this example here in this slide, you have a gaming competition. You can see everyone interacting and reacting to whatever is happening in the game at the same time. And another example of uh, Super Source is when you have a news, uh, a news uh, gathering show and people are discussing a different subject or there's a debate going on. And you normally will see uh, the presenter in the middle, one argument to the side of the left, one uh, the other side of the argument to the right. And this is how incredible Super Source is. And on top of that, you're still going to have uh, a couple of DVE available on, <clears throat> on your Atom Mini Extreme. And this is an amazing, powerful production tool that can uh, definitely take your shows uh, to the next level. Last uh, note I want to mention about the DVE here is if I want to keep my uh, picture in picture to a particular size and just bring them up with one single button, all I need to do is to create a macro for that and then you can have a macro that will display the DVE on any size that you might like to display. Okay, so uh, we are very uh, closer to a good point now. Uh, we have graphics, we know how to do animated graphics, a name tag, we know how to use our downstream key, our picture in picture, DVE. <clears throat> but something that people normally tend to uh, ignore is the quality of image. And whenever you're using the, the ATEM uh, with our cameras, they can communicate between each other to make sure that you have some consistent look uh, between your cameras. So ha let's have a look at the ATEM camera control page. So with this page, you can uh, remotely control uh, many aspects of our cameras. And this is yet another way to make your program uh, look and feel more professional. So uh, each camera has its own section. <clears throat> And the first uh, thing I want to mention here is the tally indication. So as you're looking at my PC now, you can see the PC is up to air. But if I put my DVE back on with my picture in picture, you can see my camera one is up to air as well and is going to indicate in red. Now, <clears throat> another super interesting aspect of this is if I put my DVE on the bottom there, you can see that I have a color correction tool, which is color wheel based, pretty similar to DaVinci Resolve. So if I extend that, and you can see I have my controls for my lift, my gamma, my gain, and you can even input uh, particular uh, values in any given uh, color channel. But the way that works is I'm using a Blackmagic Pocket 4K at this point, and if I click and drag this, you can see my image is going more yellow, more yellow, more yellow, red, and this is how you can uh, use this page to even create something that's more cinematic or any particular look that you might uh, want to apply to your final footage. You can even uh, change the contrast. Uh, if I bring this, I'm going to destroy my image a little bit. Or even saturation. If you want to have a, a camera output in uh, something like a black and white picture, uh, you can change the hue. You can even choose between uh, uh, RGB and uh, YRGB. So this is all great, very interesting. But the main point of this as well, other than make your uh, f uh, picture, your live production look incredible, you can even use this to match any other cameras from different brands that you're using because cameras they have different uh, internal processing, different color sciences, and 
that it's going to be uh, very likely that if you're mixing other cameras with your Atom, uh, if you're Blackmagic cameras, <clears throat> there might be the chance that you might need to do some color correction before putting them to air so they can look uh, with some color accuracy across all your cameras. So this was the color correction page. Next, we have our camera settings uh, control section, which is just this stripe here. And if I put my picture-in-picture uh, <clears throat> picture on it again, you can see that my first one will be uh, my gain, which will be equivalent to the ISO uh, control on your camera. So if I click push that up, you can see I'm overexposing. If I put this down again, I can have the ex amount of exposure I just want. This is our uh, shutter speed. I'm not going to change that to not create any problems with the image. And last, we have our white balance or color temperature. So I'm standing behind <clears throat> behind me. There's a, a, a white background. So I put my uh, color temperature quite uh, low. So I have a, a, a bit more of a cold look. And next, we have our iris settings. So uh, with this crosshair here with a dot in the middle, if I push this up, I open my iris. You can see overexposed there. If I bring it down, I shut my iris and it can be I am underexposed. So I think that's looking good. The next thing we have here is our zoom controls. And some of uh, uh, our Blackmagic cameras will have some motorized lenses that support zoom control. And you can find a list of them on our website. And this will basically help you to do zoom in and out remotely from your ATEM software. So how amazing is that? This can help a lot to create uh, interesting angles in your production without in, even needing to uh, leave your spot where you're controlling uh, your ATEM software. Last thing I want to show you today on the camera page is the, the, the focus section. So this is our manual focus wheel. And if I click and drag here, you're gonna see me going out of focus. There you go there. And if I wanna bring everything back into focus, all I need to do is to press my autofocus button and you will see the camera will recognize uh, that my face is, is the forefront of this image and it will focus in it again. So um, we have great looking video, which is very important, but also, the ATEM uh, control will help, especially if you're using a Blackmagic camera as well. But another thing that's imperative for group production is uh, great audio. And the ATEM Mini can uh, accept audio in different ways. So let's have a quick look at the audio page of the software control. So the simplest way to, to bring audio in here is uh, to, for example, connect a microphone to your camera and all your sources here will have that dedicated uh, channel for controlling audio. But normally, uh, instead, if you're using uh, the camera uh, microphone, the built-in microphone, they normally are omnidirectional, and this will be problematic because it will not pick up only you, it will pick up everything on your environment. And background noises can be very destructive and make you even less intelligible. Now, you can connect a, a, a directional shotgun mic uh, or a wireless mic on the camera, for example. But today, I am <clears throat> connected with a shotgun mic or my analog inputs. So here you're going to find your very uh, standard audio controls. That looks pretty much like a DAW and digital uh, mixing interface. You have your faders. You have your uh, pan left and right on an audio follows video and on the analog channels you have on and off. You have your trim here and you have your gain on your audio um, analog input. Now, you can see that my uh, voice is, is coming quite hot there even though it's not distorting. But there's another additional feature on the ATEM Minis that's present as well on the Television Studio Pro 4K and in the Constellation, which is uh, Fairlight Audio. What Fairlight Audio allows you to do is to uh, add a few extra uh, dynamic processors 
or even EQ processors to your audio signals. So let's have a look at the six band EQ equalizer that's included on the Fanlight audio engine. So here I have my uh, six band uh, equalizer. And for example, if I have some uh, uh, low uh, humming noise, let's say there's a car parked b b um, in front of my window and I want to try to remove some of that low end, all I need to do is to dial my frequency here let's say 100 hertz and I turn my band one on which is looking as a high pass filter and there you go you have a high pass filter and your production is gonna sound uh, way more clean uh, if you have any low end noises around you you can even use this to uh, remove some high end for some harsh microphones or even uh, add some warmth in the mid-range and this is extremely useful too and you don't need any additional uh, hardware processors to achieve that. But now as I said before my voice is quite loud and I'm very 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 close to peak there if I'm not peaking. So what I can do to uh, mitigate this problem is open my dynamic processors and in this case uh, let's say I want to add a compressor to my uh, input. So if I add the compressor there, you can see my voice now is extremely compressed. I'll bring the threshold a bit up so it's not so aggressive. But you can see I lost a lot of uh, level in there. So I can add some makeup gain to it and I'll make up to what the audio level was before. All of these dynamic processors have very similar controls to what you're going to find pretty much anywhere. <clears throat> And with this, you can even use all of them at the same time. So you have an expander, you have a gate, you have a compressor, and you have a limiter. And all of this can be used at the same time to achieve your ideal audio uh, processing. So that will avoid me to peak on 0 dB here. You can see my input is going quite loud, but even though I have some green reduction going on, and that will keep my audio uh, under a third certain threshold. Now, last thing I want to mention about uh, the audio page is similar to uh, the, the color processing on different cameras and different manufacturers, uh, the audio processing will also be different according to cameras that you're using or if you're mixing different cameras from different manufacturers. And to mitigate that, the Fairlight Audio Engine also offers something called uh, the delay into your analog uh, channels. Because it's, it's normally the case when you have uh, too much processing happening on your ATA Mini. Let's say you, you're converting different standards from different cameras. Or even if you have a, a bunch of different cameras connected in there it's very likely that your analog audio ports will uh, make the audio arrive first. And that will create uh, lip sync problems. So you don't want that into your uh, production. And therefore, if you click on this here, you're gonna see that we can delay this into frames. So you can even uh, match any uh, delay video signal to your audio that will be normally arriving first and this is expressed in frames. I'm not, not gonna mess with this now because that's gonna make things very confusing, but this is an extremely useful tool uh, in terms of controlling your audio signal. And again, this will avoid you to have, to use any additional uh, external uh, processing hardware units, and you can apply EQ, dynamics, and even delay just inside the ATEM software. So um, once I have all my <clears throat> once I have all my audio uh, processing uh, correct, it's very unlikely that I'm gonna be going into my Atom software to change all the settings when I'm live. And what you can do, if you don't want to be looking at the Atom software, you can uh, you have some amount of uh, control in your hardware panel. So uh, what we're looking at here, on the top row, I have both of my analog inputs. So my controls are on and off, and you have arrows up and down 
that will change the values of the faders in the ATEM software. So if you press up or down, it's gonna uh, turn, turn the faders up and down and they will change the volume of your final output. In terms of the audio coming from your sources, you can see that on top of source one, two, three, and four, you have the options of audio follow video, which means whenever you change to that source, the, that, that source, the audio will be switched on. You have reset that resets all of your settings on that particular source. And you have on and off and arrows up and down <clears throat> that will help you to adjust your faders during your program. So again, everything can be done from the box. Once you set up your fine tuning in terms of uh, dynamics and EQ, you can have additional control from the box and you don't need to look at the ATEM software. So looking at outputs next, um, there are three possible outputs on ATEM minis and the HDMI is the most flexible one. So you can configure this to output any of the inputs there, you can see number one, two, three, and four. Any of the internal sources, or your program, or your multi-view. And you can also set HDMI 1 to direct option, which means there'll be no latency between the input and output. So uh, a great option for gamers, because no delays means more kills. And in the pros and extremes, of course, you're gonna be able to see multi-view, which is a very important way to monitor all of your sources, your device status, and and your streaming, uh, uh, your streaming status as well. So a quick note here that the AT Minis Extremes have two HDMI outputs, so they can be set to anything you want, and you can even. Uh, you can even use them like what we called auxiliary outputs. So you could have multi-view on one, you program in to order or directly output. And again, the HDMI one direct option can be set on software, but it's a great option for gamers because you're gonna have no delay on what you're monitoring. And again, this can be controlled uh, via software as well, but it's very useful to have these options on top of the panel because today as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at my program outputs and I switch between that and my multi view in, in, in case I do anything uh, wrong and I need to uh, go back into the software and see my camera, my program outputs at the same time. I can switch between that and program so I can see my program on a big screen. Last point I want to make about uh, one of the greatest features of the ATA Mini range is the uh, uh, webcam outputs, which I'm using now to talk to you. So if you put on a PC or on a Mac um, via USB-C, uh, the program uh, will appear as a webcam signal, making it very easy to use with any video conferencing or streaming software. So again, uh, the ATEM uh, Extremes have two USB-C ports. On the pros and the ISOs, you can use the USB-C port uh, to uh, record your program. And this is also available on the Extreme version but the ISOs take even further. They get the program output and they record all your audio and video inputs, creating a DaVinci Resolve file that remembers all of your transitions effects during your show. It means that you can modify the live after the fact. So again, this is an amazing pre-production tool device and is a first on the market. Finally, one of the most interesting uh, features of the ATEM Mini Pros and Xtremes is the streaming encoder. All these models have a RTMP encoder where you can send your program to any compatible streaming platform and this only requires them to have internet access. So the simplest way to do so is to connect them to your router via Ethernet and configure them to DHCP and they will get access to the web with almost no configuration. So simply copy and paste your streaming key in the software and you're ready to go live. Last thing I want to mention in this slide is we just announced a firmware update that will allow you to use the USB-C port with a wired phone tethering. So you can plug in your phone, activate the option and you can start streaming from anywhere without the need of having hardwired internet connection.
So let's have a look at some uh, solutions and workflows. Our product family is very vast and although uh, we might uh, have uh, solutions for a number of different customers, it might be challenging for some of you to identify in the product range uh, and let us know uh, which model can fit in your workflow. And therefore it's beneficial to uh, take you through some uh, the key products and that will help you to get started and scale up eventually as your production uh, reaches the next level. So first, let's look at the fundamental components of live streaming. First, we have video sources that includes things like cameras, a computer output, or media players, and is essentially the video content that we want the audience to see. We have a capture device or interface, and that defines the hardware used to connect uh, the video source to the computer for streaming, in this case, uh, the Atom Mini. And we have the software layer or streaming engine uh, that where the encoding of the video signal will happen to encode that to a streaming friendly format. And that can be either done via software by using uh, uh, computer resources such as a processing power, or it can be done by hardware using something like the Atom Mini Pro or even the Web Presenter HD. And the last link in the chain is uh, the streaming platform. And this is the service where the video is streamed to and this could be the conferencing uh, or webinar or even live video applications such as YouTube. So it's basically where the audience will see you. First, I want to show a very simple setup. And uh, the first uh, is, is one of the simplest forms uh, to go live. So we have the Web Presenter HD that has been recently announced. And this represents a simple plug and play solution to bring an SDI source over USB-C or Ethernet. And it features a professional uh, hardware streaming engine uh, with directly streaming, uh, so you can stream uh, directly to a streaming platform. And alternatively, you can have the advantage of using uh, the, UV the UVC technology, which means connecting via USB-C to any software like Skype or Zoom, and it will recognize the unit as a simple 1080p webcam sourcer no drives required. So your web conferencing and presentation will be up and running in no time and it's very easy to use. Looking at webcasting, uh, going back to the Atom Mini, in this example, you can see a very basic setup in which a couple of sources are attached to the Atom Mini and connected uh, via USB-C to a laptop. This is very similar to the web presenter initial example, but in this case, the unit works in 1080p using the onboard encoder to stream directly to a streaming platform. Um, and we have the benefit of mixing, transitions, effects, picture in picture, like we saw earlier on the practical session with the ATEM software control. So educational and training institutions, for example, or as well as eSports, gaming competitions, they would demand a very similar setup. And also offers uh, the phone tethering uh, to a mobile device. And like the Atom Mini Pro and Extreme, so you can even uh, stream using your 5G or your 4G phone mobile data. Looking at something a bit more complex here, where the next example really shows a good use of the Atom Mini peripheral connections. Uh, here you can see the USB-C uh, used uh, for external SSD recording and the Ethernet port to streaming and control of the unit. 3.5 millimeters uh, jack analog audio to input both mic and line. Four additional external audio sources. So, I mean, this can be set to uh, both mic and line. So you can even connect, for example, an audio uh, mixer in there so you have uh, some additional control before going to the ATEM hardware. And this is great for a live stream production uh, with the intent of subsequent repurpose of the content, thinking about uh, training, tutorials, seminars, sports events and highlights. And the ATEM Mini Pro ISO can in fact record all of your sources and your program and even generate a DaVinci Resolve project where you can jump straight away and get even more creative with your edit or post-production. So I don't even need to mention how powerful DaVinci Resolve is. 
So we have seen uh, the uh, easy to use, um, really easy to get started, but very powerful features. But we also know that we, you want to be ahead of the game and soon we'll be asking uh, what's next. So where do I take it from here? How do you expand and grow? So let's have a look at some more complex examples. As I mentioned earlier, combining a number of additional products, you can build a very interesting workflow, diversifying your service. In this example, we have introduced the Atom Streaming Bridge, which allows us to convert the Atom Mini Pro ISO or Extreme Ethernet output to SDI or HDMI directly or through a simple router meaning that we can distribute the program signal to a different site or area of the building using a pre-existing Ethernet infrastructure and then distribute them to other devices, perhaps another monitor or a HyperDAC Mini or even an external encoder, all done simultaneously. But we can also forward a port to the Atom streaming bridge and connect that to the Internet, yes. Now you can have your program available at global reach. Perhaps this can even become a remote feed for another Atom Mini Pro sitting in a different location around the world. Or you can even duplicate the setup over and over again and basically cre create a global network of Atom Mini Pro. But some, some uh, productions will be more demanding and it will require to deliver the the streaming even in higher resolution over the internet and in this case the example shows uh, an IO device and what we're looking at here is the Ultra Studio Mini 4K one of the many uh, capture cards in, in, in the, the capture and playback family which allows you to capture your Ultra HD program coming from the Atom Television Studio Pro 4K to your computer with this in this case, we're using a streaming software layer like OBS, but you could be using uh, something like Restream IO, where you can control all the aspects of your incoming feeds like bit rate, resolution, encoding, recording codec, and so on. So basically a gateway uh, to a streaming platform, but it's, it's very important to mention at this point as well, that when you're using a capture device or IO, uh, all the encoding will be happening in, inside your, pro your computer and that demands processing power to do so. To conclude this section, uh, we would like to show you a matrix of eight and mini models, and uh, which we have been using uh, throughout this presentation. And I want to invite you to take a snapshot at this point, so you can look back at it whenever you're exploring our website or project product page. And I'm not, obviously not going to discuss each single difference of these models at this point, but you can clearly see a glance here that each one of these models offers additional features to uh, really fulfill some of specific uh, requirements. And that takes me to uh, some uh, real life user cases to offer you some context on uh, what we spoke about today. So the first one I wanted to show you uh, is Broadcaster, not new to this, and they already adapted their offer to cover TV programs and live events. So they can access, uh, you can access them on demand or via smart platforms in exchange or either subscription or pass or, or a license fee, such as Skyport, BBC iPlayer. So in this first example, we have the Gadget Show. Uh, the Atom Mini Pro helped uh, the show to stay uh, live on screens during the lockdown. And usually uh, the program is made with an Aubrey truck with a, a 20 plus uh, team of people. And a key part of the show is for the presenters to react to pre-recorded segments that have just been shown um, to viewers. And the Atom Mini Pro was used to throw VTs, graphics and stings onto a monitor around the studio. And it was also used to host the Wallop of the Week, which is a segment that takes place on Zoom. Now, looking at all the keys here, we can sometimes you can have uh, uh, investors and Kickstarter companies, and with the main aim at yielding profits by tasking the production with creating compelling live streaming contests to boost product sales 
or event or fundraising, uh, for example. So our next example is Darude, and he's an electronic uh, dance music producer. His real name is Vio Vertanen, and he is also known as Darude, uh, most famous for his track Sandstorm, and he's using the Ata Mini Pro and a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema K, uh, 6K, 6K to stream a weekly uh, lockdown series online. So he's using Twitch as his preferred platform and his finished base, internationally acclaimed and established artists, streaming uh, three weekly live streams that attracts more than 250,000 people live viewing across 35 streams. And since his last launch in March, this highest single stream has attracted over 12,000 views alone. So perhaps uh, sometimes the goal is to design an interactive streaming channel to offer better services and user experience for an organization, for example. So you can think about schools and educational and training institutions. And the next example regarding that is a GBMC healthcare system, which is a 342-bed medical center that provides acute and subacute care, handling more than 23,000 admissions and 52,000 emergency room visits annually. So in the additional to uh, the internal town hall meetings, uh, this healthcare system and focal point productions also begin to stream uh, live uh, frequent Facebook live sessions featuring clinicians and hospital uh, leaderships discussing uh, very timely topics. So our next case scenario is could be the intent or simply to make and publish an online leisure program just to promote social events, cultural activities and hobbies as well as networking with followers. So our next example here is Playing for Change and this organization brings uh, together a diverse mix of musicians, all from uh, um, different um, musical uh, backgrounds and genres, and uh, to their local, uh, performing at their local environment. So the concerts are broadcasted uh, via Playing Live, uh, Playing for Change YouTube channel, which has more than 2 million subscribers. So this is an international foundation created to connect people throughout music, and they have been powered by the Ata Mini Pro and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So that takes me to our last example here, is the California-based uh, nominees, uh, Emmy nominees, uh, which was streamed with the Ata Mini Pro. And <clears throat> the California-based Emmy nominees for last year's ceremony was streamed live into the telecast kit with kits built around uh, the Pocket 6K and the Ata Mini Pro. And the scope of uh, what the event was looking to do was really ambitious with more than 100 nominees and so very little margin to go wrong. And all this system worked perfectly. So what we're seeing here is a warehouse where the Emmys uh, put together this kit with uh, the Pocket 6K and uh, monitor and Ata Mini Pro. And this was sent to the house of the nominees where they can uh, speak to the main program uh, via the internet live. So again, very cool way to make uh, something interactive since people cannot leave their houses. It's a perfect tool to do that. And that takes me to the end of this presentation. So it was a very long journey today, but we have discussed a number of topics regarding uh, web broadcasting, uh, live streaming and the market. We gave you a picture of uh, why this is so important and relevant these days. And we also offered uh, advice on how can you approach this business and select the right tool for it based on your goals. So uh, we've seen the practical examples uh, and a quick uh, practical session on the ATEM software showing what uh, amazing features the ATEM family range can offer. And we conclude with a little overview of some music cases and to either get you started or expand or grow your uh, current setup in this such exciting market. Um, you can have a look at our website and our product pages uh, if you need any more information 
or even download the manual from the products that you might want to buy. And if you are a developer as well, we have the software developing kit for the ATEM switches. And you can even try to create some very cool third party products that will interact with our products. So now I'm going to uh, open the floor for questions. And if I can answer your question uh, now, you can email me at presales-emea at blackmagicdesign.com. But I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have now. And thank you very much for taking your time to be with us today. All right. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for the excellent presentation. Thank so you. we have some questions. And let's start with a question from Patrick. So he wonders that if you want to start a pre-recorded feature in an ongoing stream, does the ATEM know when to start to roll the clip? Well, the ATEM doesn't play back clips. You would need to have an external source to, to play the clip. So you, you can press start and stop the streaming from the panel. But in this particular case, what you want is to have, for example, an external computer playing as a source on your ATEM Mini, that will be the ideal scenario. Or you can have a Hyperdeck Mini or anything like that. The ATEM Mini itself, when, for example, if you have the ATEM Mini ISO, it will record all the files, but the, the ATEM itself is not playback device. I hope that answered your question. All right, and the next question is from uh, Benny. So he says he has some difficulties to get the cameras to sync in the settings with the software. So do you have any recommendations for how to best manage this? Well, um, there's some things to take in consideration there uh, to sync your cameras. But first, you need to take in consideration that when you're doing cross conversion across cameras, <clears throat> if you're converting many formats, that will create more processing and therefore will connect uh, create more delay. So the ideal scenario is to have uh, at least uh, the same type of cameras and, and the same type of um, um, outputting the same uh, um, video standards because when you convert to progressive to 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 interlace and interlace to progressive or when there's a lot of co uh, uh, conversion happening in the ATA mini that will create more processing and therefore more delay. Okay, thank you. And Annika is asking what cameras have access to color correction in the software. Right, so uh, if you're using a, an ATEM Mini, um, you will have uh, the pocket cinema cameras or any of the Ursus if you're using uh, the bi-directional converter, which will convert from <clears throat> SDI to HDMI. If you're using our larger switches, any of our SDI cameras will have access to color correction. So if, for example, if you're using a Television Studio Pro 4K and you have a Micro Studio camera that will work, uh, the only thing I advise is as the micro studio cameras is yet not supported for, by the, the bidirectional converted, but hopefully we're going to see an update on that. And we have a question from uh, Robert, who is wondering, what does the sting button do on the ATEM Mini Extreme? Well, the sting button uh, is basically a transition that can have some graphics in. So basically you can have uh, normally, normally have the normal sting that we see in most places is when you close the, 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 basically you have two graphics that close the screen like that and you can, uh, you can pretty much <clears throat> customize what kind of graphics gonna be there. But it's, it's, it's very similar to the transitions, but instead of transitions to a source, you're gonna have a graphic in between. It's what you see in, in, in sports channel, for example, somebody scores a goal, you see a, a big goal in front of the screen and that cuts to the next source. So Sting is, is something similar to that. And we got an addition from Benny to the thinking question. He says he has exactly the same cameras and uh, Let's see where we have the original question. Um, so he says, why not corresponding values between camera and software? Uh, ISO versus gain, confusing and hard to manage. Um, not sure what the specific question is, but I guess recommendations when you have the same cameras. Right, um, I mean, I think the, 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 the way to go about this is 
you need to to check uh, first if your cameras have the same settings of the switcher. So your program needs to be on the same standards. And if you have any problems, you could uh, contact support as well because our support team is very responsive. One thing to make sure is always that your ATA Mini has the latest software update. Um, I cannot uh, uh, vouch for uh, something that I'm not seeing really because um, do you have the same cameras? But are, are these black magic cameras, for example, um, it's, 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 it's an example that needs to be uh, further investigated. All right, if you have different cameras with different delays, can you set different delays? The only delay you can set on the software is for your uh, <clears throat> for your analog channels. Unfortunately, there's not a way to, to uh, calculate uh, or, or even set different delays. So again, uh, my recommendation is uh, the less processing, the better. So make sure you keep all your cameras on the same standards and the ATEM uh, program in the same standard as well. That will definitely generate a less delay for you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Gabriel. I want to show you once again that we have um, a special offer for you. Let's see if we have it right here. Um, a special offer for everyone attending this uh, webinar. And we will also send you this via email, so you will have the discount code. And uh, please see our contact details. So if you want to contact us at Scandinavian Photo, this is where you can reach us in Sweden and in Norway. So thank you very much, everyone. And have a nice day. Thank you.